What's going on gang? Tim O'Connor here at Metabolic Fitness, breaking down another foundational movement, all right? This time it's the pull, all right? Rowing motions, utilizing muscle groups of the entire back, right? Your biceps, of course, are involved in that too. So just wanna get into that, break things down for you, kind of slow it down and really look into the intricacies of each and every row style, all right? So first things first with any row, you're always gonna hear us talk about retraction, all right? And that's involving your scapula, your shoulder blades, all right? And retraction simply means bringing those shoulder blades together, right? There's also depression, retraction and depression. That's bringing them together, but also trying to pull them down as well, right? You're here to talk about putting your shoulder blades into your back pockets, right? That's kind of just a mental cue of when you're standing, even with good posture, right? Keep your shoulders back, but not just back, right? Because sometimes that'll lead to shrugging of the traps, right? We wanna try and avoid using those in some circumstances, all right? But putting them back and down, all right? So retract and depress those scapula, just a general common cue they're gonna hear and you need to think about each time you're doing a row movement, all right? So as far as rows go, getting into kind of some of the standard ones, you have the bilateral dumbbell row, all right? So we'd use both those dumbbells, all right? And again, another thing that's just constantly gonna change and we'll let you know on a daily basis within our workouts, what we're looking for, right? You can get to a 60 degree tilt, all right? Making sure that we hinge to get there, shoulders back, soft knees, hinge, all right? Roughly at 60, you know you're there when your knuckles are above your kneecaps. We can get to a 45 degree row, all right? Now my knuckles are below my kneecaps, that's how I know I'm at that 45, and we'll even work to a parallel position row where my chest is now parallel to the floor, all right? And I'm in a really deep hinge position, all right? But in any of those positions, I'm gonna think shoulders back, pull them down and back in my back pockets, and I'm driving with my elbows, all right? Very common uh, form flaw with a row is to pull with your biceps, all right? If the weight is too heavy, oftentimes that's the case, but I wanna think about driving with my elbows, all right? Relax your grip, pull your shoulders back, hinge, and I'm driving with my elbows. Notice my elbow angle doesn't get too short, right? I'm not creating a ton of flexion right here, again, because that means more bicep will be involved. I'm driving the elbows, I'm not worried about creating a nice sharp angle here whatsoever, right? So again, shoulders back, soft knees hinging, right? Drive the elbow, squeeze those shoulder blades down and back, Another cue I'm thinking about while I do this is keeping my shoulder away from my ear. Again, I talked about not wanting to shrug, right? You can see my shoulders elevating and rising up to my earlobes. Keep them away as you row, and you'll be A-OK -okay right there, right? So you can do that bilaterally. We also work single arm rows very often, very frequently, right? Again, with our single arm row variations, we like to get a nice stable base, boxing your feet out, right? really putting your weight forward on that front leg and that back leg is there just to help stabilize, but you want it out of the way to give yourself room to hit this row, right? So again, always looking to get a good stretch on the muscle. So I'm reaching out in front with this style of row, pulling my chest up, right? But again, just driving that elbow. I wanna avoid rotating, right? Whenever we're doing this unilaterally, need to make sure we're staying square, engaging the core and really allowing the back to be the primary mover with that row, right? Sometimes we'll do this down here, elbow on the knee. Other times we'll elevate ourselves a little bit more, again, just to steepen that angle. But you've got those options there, and we'll do this with a band just as well, all right? Another row variation you're gonna commonly see here is the strap row, right? This one is great as far as, especially if you're doing at-home workouts and you don't have 30, 40, 50, 60, you don't have all those dumbbells available to you. The strap row is great because versatile as far as how you load yourself, all right? So with a strap row, again, you've got different grips just as you would have different grips with the dumbbells, all right? You can go pronated grip, which would be that overhand positioning right here, all right? Elbows would be out a touch wider, squeezing up, but notice I'm keeping my body in a nice straight line from my ankles up to my shoulders, keeping tension through my core and through my glutes, and again, not pulling with my biceps, driving with my elbows, and squeezing those shoulder blades back with each rep, right? Can do those neutral, can do those pronated, can do those supinated, all right? Right there, so you have three different positions that essentially we will work pronated, neutral, supinated grip, right? And all have their different purposes. Essentially a pronated, most cases, 
we're looking to get a little bit more upper back. We'll keep our elbows a little bit higher and the elbows kind of tell the story, right? The higher your elbows are, the higher up your back you're gonna work. As you bring those elbows down a little bit more, right? You're gonna get more mid back as you bring them down low, right? And oftentimes that supinated grip, we're looking to get nice and deep in those low lats right there, right? So a few things that might impact or help uh, your row form and your row performance, right? Is gonna be dictated on things like how tight your pecs are, right? Your pecs, obviously, of course, we talked about are involved in your pushing movements, right? And if you have tight pecs, right, your shoulders and your shoulder blades are gonna be in a constant state of protraction. They're gonna be rounded, right? And it's gonna be very hard to retract, right? So we need to make sure we're constantly stretching our pecs, especially on a day that you see the workout is heavy, uh, heavy heavily involves rows. We wanna make sure that, that chest is stretched. So again, a few stretches that you can do to warm yourself up would be like that door frame stretch, getting your elbow out to the side and pushing up and away, right? Again, just trying to lengthen the pec right here, holding for a good 10 seconds or so on each side, right? And doing three to four sets potentially before you get going, all right? And then we need to make sure that we're activating and properly engaging the muscles of the back before we get into those rows. So a few things you can do here, prone Ys, prone Ts, prone Cobras, all right? There's a whole gamut of them, all right? The prone Y, just like it sounds, you're gonna make a Y shape with your torso, so your arms are up and out, pull those shoulder blades down and back. Make sure we do that first. And then we're gonna drive our thumbs up to the ceiling. All right, this is a good one for the lower traps as they stabilize your shoulder blades in that overhead position, All right? When we go out for those T's, we're gonna be a little bit more rear delt, a little bit more rotator cuff, All right? And a little bit more rhomboid of the middle back right there. Same idea, these would be your T's, keeping your neck nice and neutral throughout. And then the Cobra is a good one because that also works T-spine extension. So it's similar to the T, we're gonna externally rotate and keep those thumbs up to the ceiling. But as I drive my hands, I'm also going to pull my chest and work extension through that upper back and get a good squeeze right there, right? Again, all common themes that you should be feeling when you row, retract and pack that scapula as you drive those elbows, all right gang? That is breaking down the pull row form, right? You're gonna see it a lot in a metabolic workout. Hopefully this helps set you guys up for success. If you have any questions, let us know. We'll see you soon.